Hello, Ted Morris has wanted to uh, make a video for my experimental writing course at uh, Lindenwood University in their MFA program. And this is the uh, video associated with the third group of readings from the Best American Experimental Writing 2020 Anthology. Um, I'm going to post uh, another video or a link to another video from another uh, one that I made uh, about this group of readings that's a little more theoretical. But I thought for this video, since I have been sort of dealing in the theory uh, pretty consistently, that it, maybe I would take a turn to the more practical uh, and talk in particular about, um, okay, so you're writing some experimental fiction, whatever the heck that means. Now what are you going to do with it? Um, and I want to talk a little bit about how you go about finding potential outlets, you know, uh, pub publishers, editors, you know, journals, etc., who may be interested in the sort of writing that you might produce as a result of um, having taken this course. Uh, about, I don't know, two or three weeks before um, this course began, I got an email from a student who had taken this course the last time I taught it, which I think was last fall. And, um, you know, giving me the happy news that um, they had had a uh, story accepted for an anthology uh, that they never would have written had they not taken the experimental writing course. And obviously for a teacher uh, that uh, there's, there's few words one would, you know, care to hear more, more than that. Uh, so uh, not only were they inspired by the course, but that actually led to them writing something that was accepted for publication and, and so forth. This person had published other things, too, but they tended to be more traditional. And this one was, uh, you know, more uh, of a the sort of unorthodox thing that we've been studying this session. Right. So there definitely are outlets some um, that you can turn to who are interested in uh, stories that do not necessarily follow the sort of Aristotelian traditional uh, narrative structure that we're so used to. And so I just want to share some, uh, some resources with you that you could use to very specifically sort of zero in on uh, places that might be interested in publishing the sort of thing that uh, you might end up writing as a result of uh, having taken this class. And I'm going to turn back to this anthology in particular. Um, as you probably know, if you go to the, um, the back of the anthology, there is the Acknowledgements page. And the Acknowledgements page is where the editors uh, identify where they got these various pieces from, you know, the, where, where they were published initially. And so if you go and take a look at that, you can see where each of these pieces was published before it was re republished, reprinted in this anthology. And uh, that's a, a great way to see in a very practical way, you know, okay, who, who out there is interested in this sort of thing? And obviously you can, if there's a one or two or three pieces in particular that you are kind of inclined toward that you might like to write something sort of in that, uh, in that uh, style, um, then you can go and see, well, who published, you know, those pieces uh, in the first place. And um, you'll find uh you know, some very uh, traditional literary journals mentioned. I know Conjunctions uh, is mentioned in here. Uh, but at the same time, you'll find some other venues that are not nearly so well known um, that you uh, might uh, be interested in checking out to see if you would uh, perhaps want to give them a try, right? So, uh, so there's that. And then similarly, uh, as you probably know, there are contributors' notes um, in the anthology. These are all the various uh, writers that they publish in here, and they give pretty, um, you know, pretty full um, notes. You know, nice, uh, healthy paragraph per contributor. And uh, among those notes, almost always is a list of other places that they have published uh, some more of their work. And so that also is a good key because usually. Um, these writers, this was not a, a one-off sort of thing. Usually they are writing these kinds of things pretty consistently. And so they have other pieces of a similar sort of experimental nature that they have published in other places. And so this will give you some sense of where you might want to uh, to look uh, for other kinds of, uh, you know, presses and, and, and journals and so on 
that would maybe be open to this kind of writing. Now, obviously, that's just a first step. You would have to then, you know, look up those different uh, publishers and those different journals and see if, you know, they're accepting submissions at this time and what they have to say about about that sort of thing. But it certainly is a, a good starting point uh, to do a little bit of very specific research on the kinds of publishers and journals and so on that are interested in the unorthodox style of storytelling, right? Um, I'm going to share with you some other info. And there, this is just one um, outlet that I, I find very effective for not just experimental writing and, and finding places to send my work, whether experimental or traditional or otherwise. Uh, and I'm sure some of you are already familiar, maybe all of you are already familiar with it. And um, it's going to sound like I'm a paid spokesperson for this organization, and I am not. Uh, I just uh, really appreciate what they do for writers. And uh, that's this place, Duotrope. And uh, Duotrope um, has been around for several years. Uh, they, uh, again, uh, are sort of a, a database of um, different publishers and, uh, and so on that are looking for people to, to publish. Uh, a few years back, um, they added literary agents to their database. So if, you're, if you have a book and you're looking for an agent, uh, it also is a good source for that sort of thing. I want to share in particular... Uh, I guess, three specific uh, ways that, that Duotrope can be used to help you find outlets for your work. Um, and by the way, it's a subscription service. It used to be free. And then for a while, they asked for donations. And I, I donated because I was using the heck out of it. And I thought, well, should donate. And then it did go to, to required fee base, but it's pretty inexpensive. So, so I don't think most people have difficulty affording a subscription to Duotrope. And as you're going to see, you can get a heck of a lot out of it. One of the things that um, is particularly useful if you buy a subscription to uh, Duotrope, which again is very affordable, uh, you get a weekly email newsletter. And I just uh, screenshot it and printed, I think this is the most recent one, um, of uh, Market News. And they basically, and this is just obviously a portion of it, just uh, what was on the screen when I scrolled down. But um, they give you a list of places that are currently open to submissions. So, you know, earlier I said, well, you could check, you know, the back of the, of the backs anthology and then look up those journals to see if they're accepting submissions at this time and what they're looking for. Well, Duotro, you know, kind of does all that for you in this weekly newsletter, and they just tell you, okay, these are the places that um, are open to submissions right now. Uh, they um, will list them uh, according to journals and publishers that pay versus ones that don't. Um, they, I, I've subscribed to both the fiction and the poetry uh, database, so I get a, a combination. Um, you can kind of see the little F's and P's and FP's by, by different uh, venues, uh, letting you know whether they're open to fiction or poetry or, or both. Um, if you're a creative nonfiction person, you could also uh, get the newsletter to give you information about that. I used to just get the fiction listings, and then a few years ago I started eh, writing a little bit of poetry now and again. So I went ahead and changed the settings, and uh, now I get uh, listings for both uh, fiction and poetry. Uh, so you can, again, kind of tailor it to whatever you're interested in. And um, also, as I mentioned, uh, they've added in recent years uh, literary agents, so they will give you a, a, the list of agents that uh, are open to new clients, and, and you can check them out to see if they're interested in the sort of thing you're writing as well. So Duotrope's weekly email newsletter, very, very handy. Uh, also very handy um, is their database. If you go to duotrope.com, um, you can avail yourself of a search for publishers and notice that um, it's this uh, really kind of cool um, database that you can manipulate to find exactly what you're hoping to, to submit, you know, whether, you know, whatever kind of story, whatever kind of poem or creative nonfiction or whatever it might be. And um, I just uh, did the first couple of steps here. So if you, uh, at the top here, if you, if for genre, if you put in general, then you can open up the style drop down 
and notice that experimental is one of the one of the options. So you could click on experimental and um, you know go forward from there, obviously, and you would get a long list of journals that specifically say that they are interested in experimental writing. Uh, now, as we're finding out in this course, that that can mean a lot of different things. So um, that's obviously not going to perfectly tell you if they're interested in the sort of thing you have in mind. But, you know, they've got all kinds of different uh, different uh, listings here besides experimental, absurdist, dark, humorous, uh, minimalist, pulp, quirky, uh, satirical, surrealist, transgressive, in addition to uh, literary and and. Uh, and, and mainstream, right? So you can you can uh, zero in on just uh, organizations that are looking for the experimental say, or maybe you think you have a particularly dark piece, and you could zero in on that. Uh, you can um, manipulate the database further so that you're looking for uh, a certain length. Maybe you have a, a fairly long piece that you're you're trying to place, so you can uh, limit the database search to places that are interested in longer pieces um, so that you don't waste your time going to places that are only publishing pieces in the flash range or a thousand or two thousand words or whatever it might be if you have a six or seven or eight thousand word piece you want to you know just go to those markets so you can you can do that uh, maybe you are hoping to get paid for your work uh, wouldn't that be exciting and so you could uh, limit it to just uh, markets that actually pay writers for their work um, maybe you have a piece that's already been published elsewhere but you'd like to maybe get it out there you know for more for more reads, hopefully, and so you can uh, look for places that are interested in reprints. You know that they'll 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 not they're not just looking for uh, being the first time publishers of a piece. So again, you can manipulate the uh, the database search in any number of ways and really really target um, you know journals that say they are interested in in exactly the sort of thing that you have in hand and are trying to send out there. So it's not quite so much a shot in the dark. So the duotrope searchable database highly recommended particularly if you have experimental pieces etc that you want to target and then uh, keeping with my duotrope theme uh, you also if you are twitter users um, you can uh, follow duotrope online uh, and they started recently duosuma which is a, uh, a platform that allows um, you to submit material to to magazines it's kind of like submittable if you're familiar with that but it works similarly but it's it's through the the duotrope organization duosuma and they have their own separate twitter feed so you can follow that as well but as you can see here duotrope has a running stream every day of journals that are open to submissions and links to their submissions pages and um you know, they will feature particular uh, journals uh, on a given day, um, so you can find out more about them. So again, if you are actively, you know, looking for places to send work, um, the, the Duotrope uh, organization is really good, uh, whether it's their weekly newsletter, whether it's their searchable database, whether it's their Twitter feed, uh, et cetera. Uh, those are all very, very helpful. I, I use the heck out of them and have for a number of years. So, um, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough. And they seem very, very accurate and um, very up to the minute. And they know, you know, exactly what's going on and, and, and where it's happening. And so that's very, very useful. Um, Again, there are other services, uh, new pages, which some of you may be familiar with. Uh, they also are a very good resource for finding outlets, uh, both their website, newpages.com, and they too have a weekly newsletter kind of thing that you can sign up for you know, via email, uh, so you can uh, avail yourself of that. And again, those are just a few uh, possibilities, but, but I highly recommend uh, Do a Trip especially. New Pages is good, and there are some others out there as well. So hopefully... By the end of this course, uh, if you haven't been a, a, an experimental writer previously, uh, hopefully uh, you maybe will want to try your hand at that. I know some of you have said you have been inspired to try some uh, things similar to what we've been reading, and that's great. And like I said, I can tell you firsthand that uh, students who have come before you have found publication uh, by writing in ways that they discovered via this course. So that, that feels good to be able to share that with you as well. So I will... Uh, 
stop there. Um, if you've got some uh, advice about how to find outlets for this kind of work, I certainly would be happy to hear about that. Or just anything uh, related to this video at all, I'd be happy to hear about. So uh, I'll stop there and um, I will see you down the digital trail.